All right, welcome back, everybody. Well, this week we're going to take on a personal favorite of mine from a personal favorite guitarist of mine from Pete Townsend and The Who. This is Pinball Wizard by The Who uh, from their 1968 uh, 69 album Tommy, the rock opera. And um, just a great piece of work, a mix of acoustic and electric, which I love. And this is really where Pete starts just nailing that unbelievable electric tone. And uh, so we're going to talk about the acoustic parts and the electric parts. There's some minor nuances that change between sort of the verses. I'll call all those out. Um, but uh, just a super fun song that we're going to take on here today. And if this is the kind of thing that you love and you haven't done so yet, please jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is a, like a button throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the uh, lessons I do on YouTube, just like this song. Um, links are in the description, so check it out. Okay, so Pinball Wizard. Um, get your right hand loose. Um, we'll start with the acoustic stuff first. Um, so first of all, it's in standard tuning. So let's talk through the first little intro piece that he does, which is solo acoustic guitar. Beautiful little intro. And um, so I'll just walk through it here, and then we'll talk about the chord shapes involved. stop it there. Okay, so let's talk about that B minor sequence that opens the song very gentle before it goes into that aggressive strumming, right? So I'm just going to walk through it more slowly. Um, I think they're downstrokes. Can't be sure, but I think they're downstrokes, those little punches, right? But you're making, you'll see the chord shape over my shoulder, right? So B minor, and you're just going to keep pedaling on that F sharp, that's the fourth fret on the um, fourth string. And then your next shape is just picking up, just picking up your index finger. And then you're making what's like a F sharp suspended or sus4, but you're leaving that first string open when you do it. So it's Resolve to your F sharp, again leaving that first string open, so it's a dominant seven. And you're walking your your third string note down. Now you're taking your your third, you know, your your middle finger on the third string on the third fret, and you're just moving that note down. So I'm changing finger, going to my index finger here. Then pick it up that beautiful dissonant. Now the last two chords, if you will, are G to F sharp, okay? But he's not playing a whole G chord. Um, I think he's making that, if you pic picture this G chord, he's not, you're not hearing those high notes. I think he's leaving that B and the E string open. So it's, right? And then when you come down to your F sharp, I think he puts the index finger down on, on the second fret. Could be wrong about that. And just, well, I, I did that too hard. But you're going to pick your hand up because you're sliding up to your B and he hits that open string, which is great. And you're moving up here to your B, right? So one more time, those chords. Mm -hmm. 
right? I think that's how he's doing that. And then you're going to come up here to your your uh, B chord and do the 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 strumming, the aggressive strumming that we all know and associate with the song. So it's just a suspended four. It's a B uh, suspended four. But the way he frets this is he's going to thumb over, and this is going to be a challenge for for many of us. You're going to thumb over on the seventh fret on the E string to catch that that B note. We're actually not going to play a fretted note on the fifth string. So you're going to, as you thumb over, um, you're going to also, your thumb, the meat of your thumb is going to mute that fifth string. So you're sort of not getting, you're not getting that note going on there. And then the rest is just this. That formation. Right. So your thumb is over. You're going to catch that low note and you're just going to go all the way across. Now, depending on how your fingers are arching or not arching, you may or may not be hearing that that high note on there and it's okay it goes by so fast i think it's more important to get the those three as you're doing it and i should say also he's not playing this on a sort of standard dreadnought guitar like this he's playing it on a, a gibson jumbo i think it's a j200 the jumbo size and the heel of the you know, back here where you get your hand um, and the and the neck is a lot more friendlier on those guitars. It's sort of, I don't know if it's thinner this way, but it's sort of shallower that way. And it's a lot easier to do um, this kind of stuff on that guitar, but, right? So we're gonna go super aggressive and the strumming pattern slowly is You're sort of aggressive on the down, every other downstroke. You know it when you hear it, right? Um, but you're going to take that exact same formation from the B, you're going to slide it down to your A. G. And by the way, he gets looser with those strums all the way through. So that very intro, the, the, the beginning, the first one that you hear is very definitively right, that whole thing. From there on in the rest of the song, it's not that pronounced. It's more It's not, it's not as exact. So um, I think he just makes that pronouncement in the, in the, in the very beginning. Um, and then it's just loose, aggressive all the way through. So anyway, B, A, down a step again to G. F sharp. All right. So that's that whole intro and first verse. So this next section I'm going to call the I'm going to call it a pre-chorus. That whole part, right? So it's just B A D and it's not really important that you hear that note. And I think it's a cowboy E chord. It could be an E power chord like this. Either one sounds fat and awesome. And with Pete, there's always a very interesting sort of right hand um, flicker that he works into his strum. super super cool but um, then it's back to your verses now the second and third verses um, where you have your speed strum 
There it's a little different um, for the rest of the song. He's not sort of really hitting that note um, up there. He's leaving that open. He's got that, that going on. A lot dreamier, right? So notice the difference between and that note, especially down here. And then we go in our pre chorus again. Right, now it's the chorus, um, and the chords on the chorus are E, F sharp, major, and B. And it's just the strumming pattern that's sort of unique on here. That part, and then a big G. Then we have a little bridge here, which is just a D, um, and then a, you're, we're going to work in a C to a G, and it's just acoustic here, right? How do you think he does it? I don't know that part. By the way, I'm going to link um, some great isolated tracks on here. So there's an isolated uh, acoustic, um, there's an isolated electric on here too, um, and I'll, I'll link some other sort of isolated instrumental stuff on here for you. It's great to listen to. It's great to hear that sort of all broken out. It's from the you know rock band um, uh, series on the video game, so it's good quality. All right, back to another verse, and it's the same open string, like I said. goes around again and uh, on the pre-chorus and chorus same as we did before coming out of this next uh, chorus now we're going to jump up to D and the same same sort of interval that we did with our aggressive strumming um, and now Pete like I said Pete did his thumb over on this um, and uh, I can't get that cleanly on this just but where the heel of my guitar is on here. Um, his J200 allows him to do that a lot easier. Um, but it's the same, if you want to be exact about it, it's the same thumb over, but I'm not going to do that here. Now he's got the, the sus4 on, off of the D. Runs through that, and then you're down a step. Same same pattern. You're gonna skipping two frets down. Another two down. Ending on A. All right, and then we close it out with our little outro now. So that the, the normal um, pre-chorus that we did down here. Now we're sort of modifying that. It's the same sort of pat picking right hand pattern almost, but it's uh, different chords. It's going to be a D, C, F, and we're going to end on a B flat. And we're just going to go and fade out on the B flat. But what the acoustic does is And that's all that is. So that little bit at the end. And the electric. 
Patrick does all the little noodles on that part, which I love that that little part right there. So, so that's the acoustic. A couple things I'll call out that might help you on the acoustic, by the way, is um, on this, because of the super fast picking, um, a thinner pick might be um, a lot easier for you. Um, I'm using that here. I'm not, I'm not using a medium today. I'm using a, a, a thinner pick than a medium. Um, and it sort of gets a different sound. You get more of the emphasis of the... And it's just a lot easier um, to sort of drag that and, and it's a little snappier, right? So that's one thing. Also, if you can't thumb over on these, don't kill yourself on it. It still sounds fantastic, even if you just concentrate on the four strings down, right? It's really the sus. That's what your ear is listening for. You know, you can sort of thumb over and mute. Um, if you don't want to concentrate on pressing down, that'll still work and sound fantastic. And when you feel like you want to, um, you know, jump up and try and nail that thumb over if that's new for you, then just work on that every little bit of a time, okay? So, all right, so that's the acoustic parts. Let's talk about the awesome electric parts now. All right, so let's get to the electric parts of this great song. So I'm going to be using my lucky enough to have a 1968 Gibson SG Special, which I believe is close to the guitar that uh, Pete used. At least he used it live in that era a lot, and it sort of sounds like that on the record for me. Um, but great P90 growl. Um, and I'm on my bridge pickup for this, and uh, I'll put all the, the gear settings in the description. I'm actually running... Um, uh, through my DAW, through Guitar Rig, to try and get a high watt-ish kind of sound on this. But um, <clears throat> anyway, bridge pickup. Um, again, we're in standard tuning, and um, sounds like this. The kind of tone I got going on, anyway. So. Um, right, so during the, uh, the electric comes in during um, the first sort of speed strum on, up on B, and all Pete's doing are octaves. He's sliding into octaves. Um, remember that is up here on B. Goes down to A, G, and F sharp. So he's just doing an octave, sliding up. Follows it down. Gives it a stab at the end. Pre-chorus, same chords. And this is the thing, like with a lot of Who songs and Pete, he really, a lot of times, matches up strum for strum the electric and the acoustic on whatever song you know we're talking about when it's got both those pieces. He just matches the strums up exactly. Um, so the chords are the same thing, but maybe it's less, it's less strumming um, throughout it. It's more letting the chords ring um, in this part on the E. All right, then we're back up, back up to our B. Now this time, the second verse, he does something a little bit different, and he goes different again on the third verse with the electric. So on the second verse, um, he doesn't do octaves um, all the way down. Um, he just hits a B harmonic up at the 12th fret on the B string, the second string. So comes into it with, a, with his B, and then the rest of it is B octaves. that just varying in strength of picking as he's going along. But that's what he uses to dance against the acoustic that's going on. And actually both of those together sound like this. All right, so then we come down to our pre-chorus and we go into our first full chorus now on electric.
again, same chords, E, F sharp, B. Um, the guitar, the electric guitar is a little more punchy on the strum. It's that big G, he hits a, he hits the low note on G right before he hits the big chord. And again, I'm muting the, the A string. I'm not playing, I'm not playing that note. And then instead of hitting a D, like the acoustic does, this is a great Pete Townsend sort of ish trick, right? Um, he comes up here and he slides and now he's, he's switching from a pick, I believe to his fingers. Um, and what he does is he slides up to the seventh fret on the fourth string and think of it as we're going to a D chord. So think of it as this D chord up here. And he's just going to that note of the D chord. So he's going to slide like that. And we're in perfect position now. We lay our index finger down um, and we're going to get that little D triad. Right? So we slide up. And now we're just going to do a little Keith Richards thing. And give that a little, give that a little wiggle, right? So that little part again. Right? And then it goes into the how, how does he does it. And the electric lays off. That's all acoustic during that part. That that's what we learned earlier, but no electric on that part. Then we get to our third verse, and we're different again, something a little bit different on the third verse. Um, again, we're doing our the acoustics, doing the speed strumming on the B. And um, remember the first time he did octaves? Second time he did the harmonic. The third time, he's just going to palm mute on the first string. I believe it's the first string. And he's going to grab the B note, same pitch as what we did the harmonic. And he's going to grab the seventh fret on the first string. But you're going to palm mute that. Um, to, and uh, he's just going to pick it. It's going to sound like Morse code. Over that. And here's how that sounds with the acoustic. Right, then we come down to our pre-chorus again. And this time, we're gonna jump up to a high E chord up here, a high E power chord, instead of for the first time. And back to our low. Do a little dance. We back off on our pick attack. Right? So just slowly. You can just fool around with any of those notes, but you're just playing with the D chord and picking up the first string, the uh, finger that's on your first string and you're just playing very lightly and notice how these p90s really clean up when you just back off with your pick attack it's something pretty unique to them in my experience you can hear that open g string for a second and then acoustics up here to d doing that and we're going back to our octaves Following it down. All right. And then we're about to go into the outro, and there's a uh, very similar, it's the same sort of rhythm uh, chord strumming pattern 
as the normal pre-chorus, but it's different chords this time. So instead of instead of B A E or B A D, um, it's gonna go D, and then the C formation. He doesn't really grab those strings, but F power chord. Our outro is just grooving on the B flat, um, B flat dominant seven. And so all the little noodling parts that the electric does over that, while the acoustic's just strumming that B flat, it's just over a B dominant seven chord, this shape. And um, my tab on Patreon has the exact sort of picking sequence that he does. I'll sort of approximate it here, but uh, but yeah, he's just backing off and... That's not exactly what it was, but he's doing all of that there. It's all happening. It's all around that B dominant seven. And that's how the song fades out. Right? So yeah, that last bit. Right, well, that was Pinball Wizard by The Who and the great guitar wizardry, if you will, of Pete Townsend. And um, hope you learned something new today. If you like what you saw here and you haven't done this yet, I invite you to jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell will let you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do something similar, let me know what that is too. But until next week, take care, everybody.